Go ahead, lift your hands to heaven and keep drinking. Nobody leaves here straight. <laughs> Nothing worse than a straight Christian. Heck, you were miserable when you were out there straight. <laughs> People go through great lengths to get high, you know that? In fact, they're willing to die, and they are. Until they met the most high. Then that was the greatest high. And you're still saying hi. Every morning, hi. <laughs> you say hi to him and bye to the devil. <laughs> oh, glory. Yes, thank you, Master. Revelation 12. We need a revelation. <sighs> Nothing like a great refreshing to kill the refleshing. Revelation 12. Hallelujah in verse 7. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. And war. Okay, that's good. <laughs> How many of y'all know there's a war going on? How many of y'all know you were born in a war? And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the who? The dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor were a place found for them in the third heaven any longer. So the, drake, the great dragon was cast out. The serpent of old called who? The devil and Satan, who does what? Deceives the whole world. Is he still deceiving the whole world? Yeah. He was cast to the earth, the earth, the physical realm, the first heaven. Does everybody understand that? There's a physical part and there's a spiritual part. It's actually called the first dimension. There's three dimensions, three heavens, three dimensions. Who deceives the whole world, he was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now in this, we know that there is a, not only a dimensional war, but there's multi-dimensional battles. And one of the things the Holy Spirit was bringing to me, he says, remind, remind, remind. In other words, bring to remembrance that we, have, we are involved in a multi-dimensional battle. Not only is there a continuous wa war going on, but every day you and I are in a multi-dimensional battle. Now, in this multi-dimensional battle, in other words, there's a battle not only in the spirit realm, in the physical realm, but there's a battle in the soulish realm. Those are three areas of dimension. You and I are three-part being. We are a spirit, we're a soul, and a body. Each one is associated with each dimension. Does everybody understand this? So we want to overcome by being united in one with Christ. In every area, that means your flesh and the physical must be crucified. Your soul must be converted to the mind of Christ. And your spirit must be strengthened with wine and oil all the time which is called being filled with the spirit of god why so we can be one it's his greatest desire for you and i to be one because when you and i are one with him we see the way he sees we sense things we hear him and you don't even have to hear his voice because his voice radiates in your being and you know what it is you know what's what. When he says, lean here, go here, be led, you're being led because you know there's a sense of the drawing of the Spirit. It's called quickening. Amen? Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 12.
in verse 1. So, you know, we sometimes we don't realize that we're also a multidimensional being. That's how we have access to everything. Now, here's another arena. What is the tabernacle made up of? Three chambers. Every one is associated with another dimension. See, that's why there's people that are still never reached the second dimension, which is the holy place. See, by living in the outer court, you're only living in the first dimension, and it's the closest thing to outer darkness. So when you go into the holy place, then you're thriving to get into the most holy place. See, so you and I should never live in the outer court. That's not a place for a born-again Christian. That's a place for a baby, but that baby's got to come out of there to connect with the holy place. So you and I always want to live in the holy place, in the most holy place. Why? Because that gives us access to everything. In verse 1, let's read it. And it is doubtless not profitable for me to boast. I will come to visions and what? Revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know, or whether out of the body I do not know, God knows such a one was caught up to what? The third heaven. And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows how he was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. <laughs> of such a one I will boast, yet of myself I will not boast, except for in my what? infirmities because Paul knew that he wanted to maintain a place of humility he had this great revelation he was taken he was taken to the glory of God he was taken into the throne room he was brought to the third heaven the throne of God and he heard the words that were speak spoken but for him the words were, that were spoken were so holy so righteous that anything that was compared towards him was like filthy. Is everybody okay? Now, that was the place where Lucifer was removed from, the third heaven. And he took a third of the angels with him, right? And Ezekiel 28. Multidimensional battles. We need to remember that we are in them. And if you're not in a battle, you become a what? A casualty. You know, that's what happens. People become casualties because they begin to compromise their battle. They become compromised, lazy. They don't fight no more. They can call out on the name of Jesus. They can go to services, but they don't fight. And you don't advance without a fight. Amen? In verse 6, Thus says the Lord God, because you have set your heart as the heart of a what? A God. Behold, therefore, I will bring strangers against you, the most terrible of the nations. And they shall draw their swords against the beauty of your wisdom and defile your splendor. They shall throw you down into the what? Pit. You shall die the death of the slain in the midst of the seas. You will still say, will you still say before him who slays you, I am a God? <laughs> but you shall be a man and not a God in the hand of him who slays you. You shall die the death of the uncircumcised by the hand of aliens. For I have spoken, says the Lord God. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre, and say to him, Thus says the Lord God. Now, speaking to the king of Tyre, who is he speaking about? Satan, Lucifer. You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. That's how God created him. 
You were needing the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardius, topaz, and diamond, braille, onyx, jasper, sapphire, turquoise, emerald with gold. Why? Because he was the praise and worship leader of the universe, and the earth was known as the mountain of God. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were what? Created. You were the what? Anointed cherub. So you know he's not talking about a man. Who covers? Who covers what? The universe with praise. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God, which was known as the earth. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. When was that? In creation. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. What was the iniquity? Pride. Amen. There was pride. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within, and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God, and I, dis I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery storm. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. And I cast you to the ground. I laid you before kings that they may gaze at you. You defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your trading. Therefore, I brought fire from your midst. It devoured you. And I turned you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all who saw you, all who knew you among the peoples, are astonished at you. You have become a horror and shall be no more forever. Now that is prophetic because we know that he will be destroyed. Amen. This was Lucifer. He was removed from this third heaven because of his pride. Amen. In Ephesians chapter 6. Multi-dimensional battles. In verse 10. Let's speak it. Finally, my brethren, be what? Strong in the Lord and the power of his might, not your own. Amen. And put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the trickery or the deception of the devil. It's amazing to me, again, where people do not get dressed with the full armor of God. Let me share something with you. Without getting dressed with the full armor of God, you cannot access. I'm going to tell you that right now. You cannot access. Why? Because you must be ready for battle. If you're not dressed with the full armor of God, the devil knows it. And he will prevent you from accessing There are certain criteria that you and I must do to have access for every dimension to battle. One of them is being filled with the Spirit, amen, and putting and getting dressed with the full armor of God. Well, look what this full armor of God, he says here, verse 12, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age. Against spiritual hosts of wickedness, where? In heavenly places. This is known as the second heaven where Satan's kingdom reigns from. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be what? Able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with the what? Truth. Truth. Having put on the breastplate of what? Righteousness. Having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one, which is the voice of the stranger. You know, that's why many people are still bound by voices or being misled, because they don't get dressed with the full armor. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplications in what? In the spirit, which means what? In tongues. Do you know that that's the seventh part of the armor of God? 
And people still refuse to seek the gift of the baptism or speak in tongues. So they're missing out on the completion of being fully dressed for battle. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Powerful. Putting on the full armor of God to battle all three dimensions. You cannot without the full armor of God. Amen? And James chapter 1. Again, Satan's greatest weapon is what? Deception. What's the, what's the first thing he tries to steal from you? Your identity. If he can compromise your identity, he's got you. You know what happens then? You rely on you. Your, your intellect. James chapter 1, verse 12. Everybody there? Blessed. Everyone say blessed. What's the opposite of blessed? Cursed. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. What about the one that doesn't? He's cursed. Why? He brings a curse on himself. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who what? Love him. If, he, if you love him, you do what? Obey him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires. What's a desire? An emotion. And what? Enticed. So these um, emotional idols, that's what the enemy is always trying to entice on. Remember, people are enslaved by emotion. It says that when desire has conceived, when that emotion has taken a place, it's desiring the presence of evil and doesn't even know it. It's looking for fulfillment other than God. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to what? Sin, which is its invitation to the presence of evil. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth what? Death. Don't be deceived, my beloved brethren. <laughs> Don't be deceived. This is so powerful in this arena to where we got to understand because this is the soulish arena. That's another dimension. That's an area where you and I have to battle through. That's why the soul must be constantly converted and renewed. Converted and renewed. Converted and renewed. Converted and renewed. So you're always, there's a process of conversion that's constantly happening, and there's a process of renewing that's constantly happening. And that's your mind, your will, your emotions, your imaginations, your conscience. All of those things are constantly, especially the imagination. I mean, you know, emotion will set a picture. That's why when you go into a store, you go somewhere, you hear music from the old, what's the first thing it brings? A picture, a memory. And what the enemy wants to do is burn it so it stays there. Then he has access to you. then you're still living in the past because all of those are from your what? Your past. So this is a, a dimensional place, an area where you and I must constantly battle. Amen? In Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians 2. You know, we have a call, we have a purpose, and a what? Destiny. What's the call? We're called to what? Battle. We're called to battle. Amen? We are called to battle. That's the first part of your call. That's why you must be equipped to battle. This is not about a soulish thing. This is not about goosebumps. Amen? If you try to battle with goosebumps, you're going to lose. Oh, I feel God. I must have it all. No. <laughs> That's where people become granolas. Amen? Nutty and fruity. 
Ephesians 2. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world. Who's the ruler of this earth? Satan. We just read it. Amen. According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires, which is the soulish, of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. Under who? The prince of power of error. That's, a, that's in the first dimension here. Does everybody get it? Oh, hallelujah. In this, we know that in this battle, you and I have an inherited spirit, a inherited position in the spirit as a born again by the spirit of God. When you become a Christian, Christ-like, amen, you get filled with the spirit of God, which is a born again state of being that allows you access. See, people are still trying to get access without being born again. Does everybody understand that? And it's a state of being. You can't access if you ain't filled with the Spirit. Because you're going to try and fight multidimensional entities out of one dimension. And you can't. You will lose. Is, is everybody getting this? I'm getting some funny looks. Like, what the snap? Deep calls unto deep. You know, God is training us up to be able to access everything. Let me tell you something. I had a vision while we were worshiping. And I saw this huge hurricane-like. And it's been hovering and going. But, you know, it, for us it was like... It, it's happening, but it wasn't fully affecting us. And the Lord said, we're at rest right now. Because we're in the eye of the storm. But we're about to come out of the eye of the storm. So right now, it's a preparation of strategy. It's a preparation refreshing, reconnecting. It's a preparation with the understanding of how we got a battle, how we must be prepared because things are getting ready to happen. Does everybody understand? So I saw this, you know, like if you're above the earth and you can see the satellite picture of it, a big, like hurricane storm, but we're, and it was hovering the whole earth. So it's not just here, it's all over the earth. And the whole earth is about to go into, a, come out of the eye of the storm and enter a storm. And you and I must be ready. But in this readiness, it's a readiness to overcome all of the temptations, all the false imageries, all the false doctrines, all the lies. And be able to rescue as many souls as possible. Because there's going to be things that are going to be exposed. There will be things that will be hidden treasures that are going to reveal. Like archaeological finds that will come up and expose the wickedness behind many of these corrupted organizations. Even religious organizations. You're going to find people be plagued. Falling from places. Pride is the number one killer. Unforgiveness. Bitterness. All of these areas. Because they've been inconsistent. They're self-sustaining instead of Christ-sustaining. All of these things are about to occur shortly. And we want to be ready. Amen. Hallelujah. In Mark 16. Mark 16. Thank God we have the victory. 
So this is not about gloom and doom. It's about victory. You know, we're getting ready for the, the beginning of the largest harvest. <laughs> the jails are going to be filled. Praise God, what a harvest is going to be in there. Mark 16. In verse uh, 14. It says, later Jesus appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table, and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. They didn't believe the messengers. He rebuked them. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he who believes, what's the word believe mean? Follow. And is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be what? condemned. See, there's still, still people that don't get the comprehension of follow. I just believe. Well, you're going to really believe when you end up in hell. You're going to wish you followed. And these signs will follow those who follow. In my name they will do what? Cast out demons. Isn't it phenomenal that is the first thing that he talks about? Why? These multidimensional celestial beings are called demons, disembodied spirits. But they need a human body in this realm. That's what makes them multidimensional. Because they influence you from the unseen, but they, once they get into a person, that person is now submitting to darkness. He will now carry the words of evil. Even though he will have a form of goodness because they're eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but not the tree of righteousness. So they can't produce righteousness. It's against their nature. Does everybody get it? They cannot produce, but they can have a form of godliness, goodness. They can fake it, but they can't make it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> And, they, and, and so the first thing he says, they're going to cast out demons. Why? Because they are born again by the Spirit of God. Amen? Filled with the Spirit of God. And they will speak with new tongues. Hello, that is the sign of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He's saying those who are baptized in the Holy Spirit who have power now. They've come out of the outer court. There isn't anybody in the outer court that's casting out devils. They may try, but it ain't happening because they're not backed by the anointing. It's only in the inner court and then the, uh, the holy place in the most holy place. Now, let me share with you. You can be in the most holy place and end up in the outer court by not being consistent, by touching and agreeing with something you shouldn't. And they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it by no means hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick, and they will what? Recover. See, so many times people think that just laying hands on the sick, and instantly they're going to get healed. Now, I'm not saying that can't happen. I like when that happens. But laying hands on the sick and praying for their healing, healing is a process. Miracles are instant. I've seen paralyzed people who walked and ran, and I chased them after I prayed for them. And, they, and God healed them. I want to chase them, man. I'm, they're going to run around. I'm going to run with them. I've seen people get healed of cancer in legs, and, and God healed them. All kinds of things. But in that, there's a process of healing. So laying hands on a person, and healing comes Sometimes God will give them wisdom of something to take to bring healing. Does everybody get it? I mean, because our bodies are created to be self-healing. The problem is, is all the garbage we take in our bodies, it's having a hard time fighting that off to bring healing to the body. Anyways. So these signs will follow those who are spirit-filled Accessing multi-dimensional areas and realms. 
and coming against these spiritual entities that have entered human bodies and minds. You and I are bailing that all the time. In fact, you know when the Spirit has come in, an individual. You know when that Spirit's come in, an individual. Because they can't receive what you're trying to share with them. Now, they might have been fine two weeks ago, and all of a sudden, boom, they touched and agree with something. And next thing, that veil comes. Because remember, when, what the first fruit of the curse is blindness. 2 Corinthians 10. The second fruit is lying <laughs> when that curse comes. People lie. Second Corinthians 10, verse 3. For though we walk in the physical, the flesh, we do not walk a war according to the physical or the flesh, right? Verse 4, let's speak it. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. What's a stronghold? A memory lie. Where did that come from? Your past. It is, if it's not been taken care of. You know, memory is burned. Think of a computer. Amen? You don't remove the memory. You can't remove it. But you can replace the effect of it. So you cover it with truth. Does everybody get it? And when you cover it with truth, the blood is activated. When the blood is activated in that place, it no longer has a hold on you. So the memory may come, but it's, eh. Don't bother me. So in these strongholds of memories, that's why it's so important to sever all emotional attachment with them. Because that's how the spirits get fed. Remember, we are fighting Three dimensions, multi-dimensional realm. You are fighting the spirit realm, the emotional, the soulish realm, and the physical realm. And the enemy is trying to attack every one of those areas in your life because we are a triune being, which gives us access to three dimensions. Is everybody okay? Cool. All right, so he says, for our weapons of our warfare are not physical or carnal, but are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down what? Arguments. In other words, voices of strangers. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity and obedience. In other words, you've got to recognize these thoughts. You can't just allow this thought to roam in your mind. And, and once it accesses your soul, it's changing everything around. It's trying to reconnect. So when that thought comes, don't think, oh, yeah, well, hmm, stop watering it. It's going to grow and bear fruit real quick. Get rid of it. Exchange it out. That's why people are oppressed a lot. Or they're always, woe is me. Or they get so offended all the time. Because there's there's still so many open doors of the soulish arena. They can't they can't take correction. Cause the enemy still got a hold. And preventing them to battle. And it says, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So the weapons of our warfare are to battle all dimensions. Dimensional thoughts carried by voices of celestial entities. See, we've got to look at this a little bit more deeper. These are celestial entities. They are multidimensional entities that have access to anywhere they're allowed. So ignorance doesn't prevent them from accessing. That's why God says, my people are destroyed for what? Lack of knowledge. 1 Samuel 17. Training for reigning. We 
verse 44. 1 Samuel 17, 44. This is where David was challenged by Goliath. Now you got to remember, Goliath <laughs> was a celestial entity with a terrestrial body. Does everybody get it? He was a celestial entity in a terrestrial body. He was a giant. All men feared him. The whole army feared him. Here comes David and the anointing. Only the anointing of God could have destroyed that celestial entity. Does everybody get this? Is everybody there? Verse 44, and the Philistine said to David, come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword, with a spear, with a javelin. But I come to you in the what? Name of the Lord of the army. The God of the armies of Israel whom you have defiled. defied. Now this is powerful because here's, here's a celestial being in a terrestrial body, right, going to fight David in the physical. Because he's got a physical body. He knows he has more power. But he doesn't understand the anointing there. David's not coming to him with anything else but the name of the Lord. So David's going to do a spiritual fight in the spirit realm and allow the physical to follow it. Does everybody get this? Come on, the dude picks up a stone and, whoosh, whoosh, and hits it. Hits the dude right where? In the head, in the mind. And causes him to crash. Because the word of God is a rock. All right. Hallelujah. <laughs> in verse 46, this is the day the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you and take your head from you. <laughs> and this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Now, think about this. David not only said to the Goliath, I'm going to have your head, but I'm going to have all of you. Does everybody get it? See, he went more than just Goliath. He went right to the whole army. Why? Because he knew that the Lord of hosts was with him. David was fighting a celestial, multidimensional entity in a terrestrial body known as a giant. But the name of the Lord of the army of God Almighty, his name, his word, and his blood were the weapons that David used. In Matthew 16, One of the things that we must constantly do is keep our weapons activated. Keeping your weapons activated. And you do that by prayer, by confession. You're using your weapons, the name of the Lord, amen, the name of Jesus, his word, and his blood. And when you speak it, you're activating it. Matthew 16 and verse 13. Remember, Goliath you went with a sword. He went with a javelin. David went with the weapon of God. Let's speak it together. When Jesus came into Caesarea, uh, the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the, his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Now he's requiring a relationship. 
He's requiring it. And Jesus answered and said to him, and Simon, Bar uh, Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the anointed one, his anointing, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty, the Son of the living God. Now think about this, okay. <laughs> Jesus, the Spirit of God, came and put a body on, came into this realm to defeat the head of the celestial army that was against God. Does everybody get it? See, Jesus had to come in. He had to come in with a physical body. He had to produce his own blood because he was creating weapons. His name, his word, and his blood. He was creating weapons to leave behind for his body that he was getting ready he was going to pay the price so that you and I can be cleansed. And he was going to leave everything behind for me and you so that we would have the strategy, the weapons to defeat these celestial entities of darkness and wickedness. We've got to begin to look more in the area of military, not religion. Everybody okay? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 17, and Jesus answered and said to, said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my what? My Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. In other words, on this anointing. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the what? The keys. Of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So you and I have been given these weapons, strategies, not only the weapons of his name, his word, and his blood, but the keys to access every dimension. Everything. You and I do, do not lack any weapon from God. None. We have no excuse. Amen? Amen? Everybody okay? Revelation 12. Oh, happy days. The Lord is my strength. Multi-dimensional battles. Revelation 12, 10. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven. Where? In heaven. Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ, known as the anointed one and his anointing, has come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been what? Cast down. And they overcame him by what? The blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. In other words, deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, for you who dwell in them. Woe without eternity to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. That's why they're lying like crazy right now. They are trying to hold on to their positions. They're trying to hold on to their seats. They're going to lose them. 2 Corinthians 6. Oh, happy days. Remember, we're, we're seeing the parallel in the area of the battle that's going right now and it's going globally in all government. People are protesting, tired of all the, the corruption and everything else globally. Because that's what's going on in heaven. Second Corinthians six fourteen. He warns us, he says, What? Don't be unevenly yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness, and what communion has light with what? 
darkness. Hmm. And what accord is Christ with Belial, or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them, I'll walk among them, I'll be their God. And they shall be my people if they will come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch and agree with anything unclean. And I will receive you and I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. In other words, do not give place to the devil. Don't agree or touch with anything unclean. And people still have a hard time with this because they still play with accursed items and don't realize it. Accursed items. In Joshua 7. Oh, happy days. Oh. Glory. Joshua 7. Everybody there? In verse 10. That's why we must be careful that, because the, the Lord warns us, he said, look at you're going you're gonna to be attacked with deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. And don't receive any doctrine. Be careful what you uh, agree with. Because those are doctrines of demons. Amen? And Joshua 7, verse 10. So the Lord said to Joshua, get up. <laughs> why? Do you lie thus on your face? Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken some of the accursed things, and have both stolen and deceived. And they have also put it among their own stuff. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies, because they have become doomed to destruction. Neither will I be with you any more, unless you destroy the accursed from among you. Get up, sanctify the people, and say, Sanctify yourselves for tomorrow, because thus says the Lord God of Israel, There is an accursed thing in your midst, O Israel. You cannot stand before your enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. Now, accursed items. How many of you know cigarettes are an accursed item? How about alcohol? How about pornography? How about certain music? How about certain books? Certain movies. Amen? How about logos? You know, just because they approve marijuana doesn't mean you wear it. How about skulls and crossbones? It's still amazing to me how many Christians walk around with skull and crossbones, which means death. It's an accursed item. People walk around with things that have devil on them. I remember one time I was, this woman comes with me with a, was years ago. She said, I can't handle my kid any longer. He's got a Tasmanian devil t-shirt on him. He's acting like a devil. Well, hello, dummy. I was outside of a, a courtroom, and this kid was jumping all over the place. I'm like, Lord, what's up with this kid? I, I'm going, I bind that spirit in that kid. And he says, look at what he's playing with. It was Pokemon. I'm going to go wrap it up and throw it all out. It would have caused too much commotion. <laughs> then I would have never been able to get into the courtroom. So. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we, you got to remember that these things, these draw multidimensional entities because a curse draws them. Anything that's a curse will draw them. I, you know, I, I, it's amazing to me how many Christians still drink non-alcohol, beer, or whatever. Okay, so there's no alcohol in it, but you're pretending like you're drinking it or whatever? It just doesn't make sense to me. They might as well walk around with those candy cigarettes. <laughs> At least I could chew them afterwards, you know. You remember those when you were a kid? Man, you don't think how many people got addicted to cigarettes from starting off with a little candy one? 
I went through a pack a day with those things. They were delicious. <laughs> You'd blow the dust off of them, you know, they had the powder. Oh, look at this cigarette, man. Next thing I know, I'm stealing cigarettes out of my mother's purse. Anyways, Exodus 15. So now they got vape. People are getting vaped out. Hallelujah. Then you got every doctor coming up with any, listen, if we can sell the dope to these people, we'll do it. It's money. That's what they look at. So they come up with every name possible. Bipolar, tripolar, any kind of polar you can get. It's free. Just got to pay for the medication. Oh, there's no side effects. Death, suicide. Of course, you can't read it. It's so small. Exodus 15, verse something. Two. Let's speak it. The Lord is my what? Strength and song. And he has become my salvation. He is my God and I will praise him. My Father's God and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he cast down into the sea. His chosen captains also are drowned in this Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They sank to the bottom like a stone. The Lord is my strength and song. He is a weapon. We, we have the weapon of praise and worship to ambush our enemies. Amen. First Thessalonians 5 and then one more scripture. Oh, happy days. Multi-dimensional battles. Sometimes you need to recognize what battle you're in. Whether you're in the physical, and you're praying for healing battle, amen? Or emotional, mental. What did I say to First Thessalonians? Five. First Thess 5. Is everybody there? In verse 14. Let's speak it. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 14. Now we exalt you, brethren. Warn those who are unruly. In other words, those who are not battling. It's called unruly. Comfort the faint-hearted. Uphold the weak. Be patient with all. See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good, both for yourselves and for all. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. And do not what? Quench the Holy Spirit. Don't despise prophecies. Test all things, hold fast what is good, and abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify and complete your what? completely and may your whole what spirit soul and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our lord jesus christ he who calls you is faithful who also will do it so he tells us right there he warns those who are not in the battle sanctify complete make sure that your spirit your soul and your body those multi-dimensional battles are sanctified unto the lord and close at uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy 2 verse 1. It's amazing how many people still think that they can have a drink. It starts with one compromise. One compromise, one cigarette, one whatever. It only takes one. Just, just to even consider it, there's already a disconnect. Just to even consider it. Well, maybe just grieve the Holy Spirit.
Verse 1. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that's God's plan that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this world. I want to say that again. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself in the affairs of this world. In other words, doesn't touch anything unclean. Doesn't agree with it. Has taken over. It doesn't, it doesn't hold any emotional idols. This, see, if you're engaged in warfare, every door must be shut. Everything's got to be shut. You must be able to access every dimension. If there's an open door anywhere, everything else will begin to collapse. That's where we must allow God to always build the house and not us. Be anxious for nothing. Amen? See, the enemy always wants to push. You may think you deserve something. We don't deserve anything. When you think you deserve something, you've already stepped over. Does everybody get it? Well, I worked hard for this. Bummer. The only thing you and I should be working hard for is fighting for God's presence and his will. No one engaged in warfare and takes himself with the affairs of this life. That he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he's not crowned unless he competes what? According to the rules. That's according to the leading of God. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say. And may the Lord give you understanding in what? In all things. Remember that, da that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, who was raised from the dead according to my gospel for which I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of change, but the word of God is not changed. Therefore I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying, if we what? If we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he's going to deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, and he can't deny himself. Remind him of all these things, charging them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit, to the ruin of the hearers, but be diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness. Hallelujah. Multidimensional battles. Don't forget it. Father, we are honored and blessed. Thank you for your word and preparation and strategies. Lord, we ask that by your spirit you would continue to quicken us, keep us alert and sensitive to your unction. That we would constantly not only be renewed and refreshed, but activating the weapons you've given us. Making no excuses but connecting every day, getting dressed and filled with the Spirit, full armor of God, and being prepared for every battle and every dimension, for your glory, for your honor, for your praise, in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay dressed with the Lord.